Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Steve, and in today's episode, I'm going to be reviewing a watch from a cool little micro brand out of New York. Uh, the brand is called Brew. I've wanted to get my hands on a Brew watch for the longest time, and they're always sold out. Uh, the one I wanted to get was the Retrograph. It was in cobalt, very, very cool. But I actually got my hands on a Retromatic. You've, if you've seen, I unboxed this a while ago. I'll post the video up here. Um, I unboxed it a while ago and I've been wearing it on and off for the past couple months and uh, today I'm going to be reviewing it so I'm just going to go ahead cut the intro short here I'm going to flip the camera and then we'll get right into the review and here it is the Brew Retromatic now what drew me to this watch was the 60s aesthetic of the watch um, you know I just I like the look of vintage watches but I just think I'm a little too, I, I don't want to say careless, but I am a little lively with my watches. So like, I don't think a vintage watch would do well on my wrist. I'm pretty sure I would break it immediately. So just to have like these retro designs in new watches really solves that issue. Um, and this is the first time I've actually bought a squared off watch. So. I was a little hesitant on the case diameters. I'll go through the dimensions here in a second, but I was a little, little hesitant with the case diameter or case dimensions because it was only a, like a 35 millimeter, um, I, they say diameter, but it's only 35 millimeters. I'm like, oh, that's gonna be kind of small. And I was kind of hesitating, should I, should I, should I not? But I pulled the trigger and uh, I'm lucky I did because with it being a squared watch, the diameter is actually kind of like, it fills out the wrist a little bit better than just a regular, if you got a 35 millimeter watch, um, actually, actually, hang on, let me go get one. So as you can see, both of these watches are around the same size. I believe this one's about 33.5 millimeters and this one is 35 millimeters um, at the widest point. So, I mean, they're relatively the same size and you can see that the Retromatic is actually, it looks more filled out. It looks um, just a little bit bigger overall. And that has to do with that squared off design. Now, if you took the measurement here, it'd be a lot bigger. Um, the lug to lug over here is 39 and a half. So like I said, you, you look at these side by side and even though um, they are similar in the diameter, they just wear completely differently just because of the case shape of the brew versus your more traditional circular shape. So I was kind of worried at first, but then, like I said, pleasantly surprised. So let's actually go through those uh, dimensions here. The outer diameter here uh, is 35.5 millimeters. And then this measurement from top to bottom is 39.3 millimeters. We have a case thickness of 10.9 millimeters and a lug width of 20 millimeters. Um, now the bracelet does taper out, it flares out here at the uh, at the lug end. So this is a little bit wider. This is about 21 and a half millimeters and it tapers down pretty nicely. So this also weighs in at 130 grams. So it actually has a, a little bit of weight behind it and it feels really good on the wrist. And this does come with 50 meters of water resistance which is, you know, like I said, with vintage watches, you, you're gonna avoid water as much as possible. So when, it, when you have a vintage inspired watch, it just gives you that modern day protection with that old timey feel. So like I said, it does have an, that nice squared off um, case shape. We have uh, two types of finishes here. We have that brushed finish and we have high polish here at the bezel and on the side here. The crown is a signed crown. It has a little coffee bean on there. That's their logo. Um, Push-pull crown. And you'll see that in a second here. Um, so there's that. High polish. And the back side is also finished here. The Retromatic does come with a tiered dial design. So on the outside edge, you can see that seconds track. It actually sits above the main dial. And it comes with those white indices with yellow tipped accents. Uh, that plays along with that seconds hand very nicely. And then you're gonna see that uh, white date window at the bottom there. 
The dial does have a slight sunburst effect and the blue isn't that overpowering. Uh, it's actually on the brew website, they label it as a deep blue. But looking at it in person, it's more so a mix of like blue and gray or a blue and black. It's a very subdued blue. It almost looks black um, in lower light situations. So if you're looking for a you know very bright dial, very bright like royal blue, you're not gonna find that here. This is more of a uh, subdued blue. The yellow seconds hand works really well um, with the style of blue. And as you can see, the sapphire crystal doesn't appear to have much anti-reflective coating, if at all. I, don't, I didn't see it on the um, website at all, if they did or did not put any AR coating, but it doesn't look like there's any. Moving down to the bracelet, like I said before, we have uh, 21.5 millimeters here. And then it does taper down pretty heavily to 15.5 millimeters here at the clasp. We do have a brew branding uh, logo right there. I wish they would have evened it out. Um, the symmetry is a little off here. They have brew. If they would have put like a little coffee bean right here or something, it would have balanced out better. It comes down to this butterfly clasp, high polished butterfly clasp. Um, the bracelet itself is brushed. The scuffs are gonna come, but they're not gonna show up that bad. Let's go ahead and push the button here. Opens up very nicely. The finishing on the butterfly clasp is also very nice. And then as you can see on the back side, it does come with quick release spring bars. So I'm gonna actually take those off to get a better look at this exhibition case back. So in regards to the case back, the blue and black models come with these full um, exhibition style case backs to show off that Salita SW200-1 movement. The green and burgundy models come with a Seiko NH35 and those case backs only have a small little window cut out. This case back does have this nice horizontal finishing with brew universal at the top written there. No other markings, nothing else about, you know, water resistance rating or anything like that is located on the watch. Um, everything like that is just off the internet. I believe in the NH35 models, the specs are all listed out. I'll go ahead and put a picture of that. This exhibition case back is also made out of sapphire. Sapphire on the front, sapphire on the back. If this had mineral crystal, I wouldn't really mind it either. I mean, it's just on the back of your wrist. It's not the biggest deal in the world for this to be sapphire. I'd much rather have them put mineral crystal back here um, and save a little bit of money to put um, AR coating on the front, but this is the design they chose to go with. There is no branding on the rotor itself. It just states 26 joules and it is screwed in with those four screws. So like I said, you're gonna get 50 meters of water resistance on that. Yeah, with those quick release spring bars, it actually makes swapping out straps very easy. Very nice. All right, let's get into this uh, movement here. It is a push-pull push crown. Right here, you're going to have the hand winding. Hand winds very smoothly. And then you're going to pull out one position. All right, I guess I pulled it out two there. So yeah, you're gonna pop it in and all you need is a fingernail. And then it's popped out to the first position which gets you the quick set date. And then you pop it out again and it is hacking. So it does hack, which is a good thing. And sets very nicely. To hand wind this crown is a little bit of a pain for me. The crown is slightly small and doesn't offer the best of grip. Um, hand winding it, not really the best to do, but luckily, like I said, it is automatic. Hand winding it, not really the end of the world. Yeah, the bracelet looks really nice. I really like the, the look with the bracelet and the case itself. It looks like it goes together very well, but I actually want to just pop it off and put on this nice blue strap just to see a uh, couple strap options on this thing. So here we go. Very 
very simple um, with the quick release bars. I wish this also came with quick release, uh, but they do not. So it's going to be a little bit more of a pain, but we'll get it done right now. So here's the Retromatic on this nice blue leather strap. Uh, I actually bought this strap for my Yemma that's coming in the mail soon enough here. But overall, it looks pretty good on this as well. The blue might be a little bit too powerful, but I got a lot of blue in this shot. Look at that. Check that out. So much blue. But overall, I think it looks pretty nice. All right, I'm going to put it back on the supplied bracelet and uh, give you guys a little wrist shot. All right, back on the bracelet there. Let's go ahead and put that down. I'm going to take off this Alpina start timer. This thing is a behemoth. I love this thing. Huge dial, very easy to read. My first Alpina watch, and uh, I'm glad I made that purchase. So let's go ahead and put that down. And put the brew on the wrist. There it is. I have a seven and a half inch wrist just for reference. And it looks really nice. At least to me, it looks nice. I don't know. It might be small to some, but I think that really works, especially in that rectangular case. So it's the first, like I said, this is the first squared or rectangle watch that I've bought. Um, so it, it does look like it fits pretty nicely. Crown doesn't get in the way. No, it's very cool, very cool. All right, I'm gonna flip the camera and then I'll give you guys my closing thoughts. And there it is, the Brew Retromatic. So I'm gonna go through the pros and the cons of the watch itself, and uh, I'm gonna let you know if I recommend buying it. So we'll start off with the cons. I've got them written down right here. First con is going to be the dull blue. Um, looking online, it seemed that the blue is going to be a little bit more vibrant, and this isn't that. This is a very deep blue, like I said, almost almost blackish or gray. Um, it's not the most eye-catching blue. So if you're looking for like a royal blue, something like that, this is not going to be the uh, the dial that you're looking for. <laughs> These are not the droids you're looking for. Now the next kind is going to be on the bracelet. And while the links are very good, you're probably going to get a very decent um, fit on this thing, even with it being a butterfly clasp. The pins and collar of the um, links themselves can be kind of hard to adjust at times. Um, I've heard of some people having a really difficult time adjusting the bracelet. I did not have that issue, but just be aware that it can be an issue moving forward um, if you're going to adjust the, the links. Um, next, still on the bracelet, is going to be um, the logo on the butterfly clasp. Uh, with the simple word of brew, it kind of throws off the symmetry a little bit. If they would have included a uh, coffee bean logo or something like that on the other link, it might have balanced out that class. But just with the, just the words brew on there, um, it kind of throws it off a little bit. The next con I have is going to be no AR on the crystal. Now, th th these are studio lights pointing directly at the crystal. And uh, you probably won't have that big of a um, problem reading the time indoors. But the second you go outdoors, you might get a little bit of glare coming from the sun. And it might be difficult to read, especially with the handset being very thin. Um, might have trouble reading it. So if they would have put a couple of layers of AR coating on the underside of the crystal, it would have solved the problem. But... Yeah, it's a, it's a shame I'm going to have to put that under the cons list. And my last con, and I'm going to go ahead and throw up a, uh, a loom shot here, is just the lack of loom on the entire uh, watch itself. It just, I know it's a, more of a dressy piece, but the loom is very lackluster. For that $500 price point, I would expect some loom on the seconds track, um, at least on the hour indices. So, I mean, that's gonna be another con that I have. All right, moving on to the pros, and there's quite a few of them. First things first, the design of the watch, very cool. It really captures that essence of the 60s. Um, like I said, it gives me that vintage watch that I want in my collection. 
but I, it gives me that modern day uh, reliability. So overall, the design, very nice. The dial, the tiered dial, um, very cool. Uh, down to the seconds hand, very cool, very retro. I like it a lot. All right, after the design, I'm gonna go with the size of the watch. Now reading this online, I thought it was gonna be a small watch with only 35 mil diameter. I, I thought it was gonna be just too small for my wrist, but as you can see on my seven and a half inch wrist, it fills out quite nicely. So the design's good, the size is good, the finish on this watch also very good. With the high polishing and nice smooth brushing uh, along the entire uh, bracelet and case, very cool. The back of the watch is very cool. Um, the crown itself, while being kind of small, with that nice signed uh, coffee bean on there. Also very cool, plays into the theme. All right, and my last pro is going to be on the bracelet. Overall, the bracelet construction, very good. The, from the finishing down to the quick release spring bars, the bracelet feels good, looks good. Um, the clasp is good. It's a very good butterfly clasp. Overall, it looks very nice and it fits with the theme and the design very nicely. So overall, from top to bottom, this thing is designed with one intention and that is to look damn good. So they did a good job of, uh, of designing the watch and building the watch. But the question is, would I recommend the Retromatic? And if you're looking for a vintage watch that has that 50 meters of water resistance that you can kind of beat around here and there and not have to worry about being very delicate with it, then yeah, yeah, it's definitely worth the price. Now it is sold out, so I don't know what kind of premium this watch is gonna look like on the secondary market, but for that $500, yeah, I mean, it's it's a very cool design, very unique, and it, it I mean, just take a look at it. It looks really good. It's built very nice. Um, it has its flaws, don't get me wrong. But overall, if you're looking for a watch from the 60s, look no further. <laughs> Here it is, the Brew Retromatic. So I would highly recommend it. And uh, hopefully you can find one out there in the wild. So that's it. That's the video. Please leave a like, subscribe, comment below. Let me know if you have a brew watch or what your favorite micro brand watch is. And uh, I'm going to pop up a couple videos here. Um, watch both of them. I don't know why you haven't watched both of them. Then. And then don't forget to subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one.